because uh, interest is what inherently and irreversibly multiplies artificial indebtedness in, in proportion to a circulation. So this is the thing that if Ron Paul's supporters were um, responsible citizens, they would, they would answer and they would actually welcome the opportunity to answer. Instead, they, they answer your questions to them by uh, sh shouting you down or insulting you, calling you a socialist or a Marxist when in fact you're the only advocate for true free enterprise, saying that uh, um, Ron Paul is the only one who's supported by so many experts who are all likewise, of course, Austrian economists and don't have any reason for agreeing except that they just happen to is the only reason that they do. So, you know, this is just talking in circles. It doesn't answer uh, our question. The question is, how is a gold standard possibly to serve us? Well, if it could serve us, why would this headline read, Pressing Obama, house bars rise for debt ceiling. Debt. Gold would prevent us from borrowing further if money would still be lent at interest. How is that possibly so? How would you even maintain a vital circulation subject to interest? but by reborrowing principal and interest is an ever greater sum of debt. Yes, this may transmit wealth to certain persons within a system which doesn't even issue any further currency. If we did so, but the only reason that we need would need to borrow money, as we say, which isn't even the truth, uh, is that the circulation is inadequate to sustain our co our intended commerce and industry, which is the case in any system, but which is resolved when we accommodate true unexploited credit, that is, our right to issue promissory obligations free of exploitation. A return to the gold standard eliminates this proposition of uh, free unexploited credit. Yet, Ron Paul claims to be an advocate of freedom. Well, how can that be? Should we be, not be denied our right to issue promissory obligations to each other? Every contract is such a thing, you see. But when it requires issuance of further currency, that contract is given uh, the unwarranted domain of the purported banking system. Our promissory obligations to each other which are inherently obligations to pay and retire principal, have to be printed upon the bank's paper. So this is the problem with the present paper money. It isn't that it's printed on paper. It's that it's an obfuscation of our promissory obligations to each other, which first launders the principal into the unwarranted and unrightful possession of the banking system, and then, as if that were the possession of the banks, and was at risk, subjecting it to interest, which requires us to pay out of a circulation at most comprised of some remaining principal, all the principal and interest which remain in unresolved debts. All the while, of course, then maintaining that circulation by borrowing principal and interest back into circulation, which perpetually increases the sum of debt at an even inherently escalating rate until we suffer the present inevitable terminal failure. So, in truth, Ron Paul is advocating the very cause of the present failure, claiming that they predicted that these things would happen, and that they're going to save us by ending the Fed and preserving banking, if they preserve banking, as he has often said. Now, of course, the only solution is, is to uh, eradicate banking to get the exploiters out of the, the equation to restore to every individual the freedom and right to issue our promissory obligations free of extrinsic imposed exploitation which is our whole problem it comes down to that so as we look across the world today what do we see in you know 
the the real news what is the pattern here uh the revolutions that are occurring in in north africa are 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 consequences of of uh monetary failure uh, precipitating across the world. Uh, um, the next headline in the uh, New York Times, in fact, is chaos in Yemen drives economy to edge of ruin. Right. Well, it's the other way around. The economy is driving the chaos, which is the edge of ruin. Um, Another headline here says, uh, this is today evidently, um, hiring in U.S. slowed in May with 54,000 jobs added. Remember a few weeks ago I, um, I responded to uh, uh, sentence by sentence and phrase by phrase even uh, to uh, Ben Bernanke's uh, uh, report, uh, optimistic report on, on the vitality of the economy in which uh, he claimed a quarter of a percent um, a decrease in unemployment, um, however much of which he admitted um, was a consequence of people being so long unemployed that they merely fell off the unemployment rolls. Nonetheless, he was uh, predicting that this was uh, evidence of uh, resilient recovery, which of course, if any evidence in, indeed was uh, that evidence was based on the preposterous deception that you know falling off the unemployment rolls meant that you know unemployment was actually uh, decreasing or employment was increasing well he did state if you remember that uh, uh, you know we played his very sp speech breaking it down part by part he did state that we needed to meet a consistent uh, 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 goal of 125,000 new jobs per month. So what are we doing here? Are we keeping track of the math? The headline I just read says hiring in U.S. slowed in May. It doesn't say that unemployment increased with 54,000 jobs added as if that's a a plus. Well, those 54,000 jobs added don't replace the 125,000 which were lost. You see, this is a losing battle. But do they say that this invalidates the proposition that uh, uh, Bernanke had, had said just a couple of months ago that, you know, we were we were on 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 track to 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 re to a recovery of some kind, when in fact, you know, the only evidence he even provided was this uh, drop in, unem in, 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 unemployed, in unemployed counted, <laughs> which is a result merely that they'd been unemployed so long that we don't count them as unemployed any longer. You see, so this is, an, is a nest of lies that responsible people have to get to the bottom of. Now, Ron Paul is right to point his finger at the Federal Reserve System, but he's entirely wrong to advocate banking in its stead. And this is a, a the central proposition of so-called Austrian uh, economics. No matter how far you go back in Austrian economics, these people were advocates of banking and advocates of interest. But is it uh, an extrinsic party's right to issue our promissory obligations, representations of our promissory obligations in another form we call money, exploiting us by a process which is terminal, which is the very process advocated by Austrian economists, or is it our right to issue our promissory obligations free of extrinsic manipulation, adulteration, exploitation, or even eventual denial of the right even to make good on them? Of course not. So the real freedom, the thing that's much larger than what Ron Paul is advocating, and the thing, the only thing which can indeed serve us, is not a privatization of currency, which is giving the banks this unwarranted and unjustifiable authority to merely publish evidence of our promissory obligations to each other, 
calling that a debt to the bank, calling the debt to the bank, which isn't a debt to the bank, uh, a property of the bank and such that it's risked and that the risk ostensibly justifies interest when in fact all the banking system does is absorb the mere minuscule negligible cost of merely publishing the evidence of our promissory obligations to each other. This is entirely unwarranted. It's another injustice upon us and what Ron Paul is proposing if he's proposing and persisting in banking at all, if he's proposing adhering to this obfuscation of the currency in which certain private entities produce evidence of our own promissory obligations to each other. Ron Paul is advocating the very thing that the Federal Reserve System is. A central banking system is no more than this obfuscation of the currency. It's the only powers it has on us and it's the very thing that multiplies artificial indebtedness, falsified indebtedness to the purported banking system until we suffer terminal failure under a weight of, of, of insoluble falsified indebtedness which we inevitably incur because we are obligated to maintain a vital circulation merely to persist in servicing the initial debts, falsified debts, which we incur in such an obfuscation. So this isn't solution. Now, nor can any combination of returning to the gold standard uh, coexisting with this currency save us either. How do we say that? Well, you know, do the math. We've got uh, a static volume of gold. Oh, they claim, well, no, it's not static. It's increasing. Well, it doesn't increase at all like industry can increase. You know, here we are in, really, a depression, the beginnings of one. The real unemployment rate is at least twice, probably closer to three times what the reported figures are. Worse, we have another thing which we might call underemployment, that is, uh, what employment we, quote, enjoy, unquote, is far beneath our ability um, to produce or to render services uh, according to our education, according to our skills, according to our experience, according to uh, our industrial ca capacities in terms of equipment and so on and so forth. We're producing far less than we're, we're capable of producing because the system in its death throes uh, can only employ us to this, this ever uh, diminishing extent which is a consequence of maldisposition that is that this multiplying uh, sum of artificial indebtedness uh, dedicates ever more of a circulation to servicing this falsified sum of escalating debt versus sustaining the industry which is obligated to service that debt. So how is it that we can expect the House or the president to comply with the debt ceiling. It can only assume further debt. Uh, no one, uh, Ron Paul included, has proposed exactly how you would reduce federal spending enough to balance the federal budget. Bill Clinton merely lied that he'd accomplished such a thing. But of course he lied about other things which were <clears throat> possibly less important, possibly far more. Nonetheless, a credible candidate has to come up with an answer for this. How are you going to balance the federal budget? Well, the only thing that balances the federal budget and distributes the costs as we can justify is mathematically perfected economy because it uh, uh, assumes uh, the promissory obligation of those people who will consume of whatever federal service or infrastructure is provided by federal government and distributes that cost according to consumption. And of course, we've mandated uh, to do this in our mandate for mathematically perfected economy and absolute consensual representation. Is there another solution? 
Should we pay more or less than what we consume of, 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 of federal infrastructures and services? Of course not. We should pay what we consume. And this 